the only copy I've got up here, but uh, yeah, you can go. Let's go. Let's go. Do it. Make sure I'm not looking. We'll call, call like tonight's meeting with one city council to order. Jessica, would you take a roll call, please? Raymond Ponto. Present. Lloyd Luttrell. Present. Tony Gingler. Yes. Kent Miller. Yes. Matt Audie. Liam McMillan. Here. Andrew Graybon. Present. Thank you. If you'd stand with me for the invitation. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for the abundant harvest that we are reaping at this time. It will be great for our community. Be with us as we discuss the business of our city this evening, and please bring us some much needed rain. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Lloyd, do you have anything at this time? Uh, I do not, thank you. Thank you. Ken? I think all the street signs are a little bit nice up with more candles. Really, that's a lot. Okay, give a little finish to touch for sure. Lee? No, sir. Raymond? No, sir. No, this is right here. We had a terrible foreman accident. My thoughts and prayers go out to him. Yes, that was tragic. Andrew? No, sir. Katie, do you have anything this time? No, not tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Jay, do you have anything this time? Just a reminder that tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, we're meeting with rural water districts uh, 2 and 3. So uh, that'll be here in this building. And, okay. But thank you. Mm -hmm. Next item on the agenda this evening is uh, public comment. Mike Floss, the Fountain of the Park. Mike, you want to come forward? Yeah. Well, I was just, what I was wondering was what you guys thought was on that fountain because, you know, it's really a lot nicer to see the fountain going than it is to see a horse tank in there, you know. And I'm just hoping, you know, I knew earlier you were busy, you know, Memorial Day and everything going and uh, up in the pool and stuff. But we haven't seen the fountain going for quite a while and I'd like to see it going again. If you guys, uh, would consider putting back to the distribution maintenance for Steve Career and stuff work on it. I think it would work out a lot better. Yeah. That's just my comment. Sure. Well, thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. I, would, I didn't realize it wasn't working. But we'll uh, follow up on that and see what's happening. And, uh, and, uh, we'll go from there. Hopefully, if it's down, we can get it repaired. Next item on the agenda is the uh, street light assessment for North Campus and Silver Fox edition public hearing. Anybody have any comments, questions on this this evening? Is there any questions or comments on the public hearing for the, the uh, street light assessment for North Campus? There's no comments we will uh, close the book go ahead yeah uh, Jamie Meyer and uh, got a lot up there at the North Campus but um, curious on a couple things uh, number one uh, the the resolution I guess was made in 2015 and so I guess uh, I purchased the property in 2014 and I guess I feel like uh, yeah, that was before the, the resolution so uh, certainly wasn't wasn't aware of any lights uh, as an expense uh, at that point in time so I guess I'm challenging uh, whether I could be exempt from that okay Katie can you respond to that I don't have my paperwork with me um, I believe we did that not too long ago that resolution for the lights um, but to re I mean to respond to how this came about was um, there was a request for metal street street lights um, 
since the um, city owns more than 50% of that property, um, essentially we, sometimes when we do projects, we have the property owners petition the city to put infrastructure in. Well, in this case, um, we didn't have to, kind of had to, we were able to skip that step. And the city was able to do the resolution on their own because we do own a large portion of those. Um, there was um, first a resolution to consider the project and then there was a resolution um, to actually do the project which lays out how it was to be assessed, then the work gets done and then we get to this which is kind of the final step. Um, there, um, as far as notification, there um, was notification in the paper of very early on of one of those resolutions, the one before that was resolution was considered, excuse me. Um, but again, um, just the way that property and the whole project lays out with the city owning the majority, the city is able to kind of make that decision. And that's what we did with the rest of the resolutions that we had passed earlier. Right, yeah. right. Well, my second question then would be, uh, why we deviated from how the special assessment assessments uh, uh, were done, you know, from the concrete because the concrete was we paid for half the materials and uh, and the light poles we got we got full full brunt. Do I understand it? Um, you paid for most of the materials. Uh, actually, all of the materials were assessed to property owners up there for streets. Yeah. Um, and this actually is just for the poles. The city covers what cost of a wood pole, the light, the actual. <coughs> so this is only for a metal pole. Um, this is a difference, right? From the right. wood pole to a metal pole. Yes. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah, but as far as the street, um, the way those were assessed, there was a request from developer to um, for those 12 lots to be assessed equally. So that's how we did those 12 lots. The um, city did our normal practice of the frontage um, for the concrete. For this, um, the way it was proposed was to do by square footage per lot. I thought that would be the most equitable way to um, go about this. Some lots are excluded. Some of the smaller lots, for example, along Walnut, are excluded because they're not really benefiting from these lights there already along a street with lights so when you see the numbers or when you see the ordinance that's why not all the lots are listed so where would a person find the the cost breakdown then of of the uh, of the streets and then what what we were assessed on that because I guess it was my understanding that we were getting paid paying for half of the materials um, I have I have no I can that too. Um, yeah, there was a there was a contract to do, and this got a little convoluted because we the city started the project and the Cooper edition and then it ended with a contractor. So the city started the, the intention is always for materials to be paid in full by the homeowner. Um, so the city started that and then we had to amend our contract with Mr. Cooper and he had it a max amount of material costs because he Obviously, the contractor's going to have a little bit of a markup, and he was concerned about that. Um, so there was a max amount of material cost. I want to say the difference between um, our estimate and the actual material cost from the contractor was like 10, I mean, it was it was not half. It was very, very little. Um, but I could get you all, all of that information of how that came out. Um, but those materials were are all assessed out to all the properties up there. Is that is that pretty consistent with what everything's been done in the past then as well? Yeah, we do materials and engineering cost to the um, property owner and the city does labor. So in this case, the city did a portion of the labor on its own, but then because we had a contractor come in, the city actually picked up the cost of that contractor labor um, because that's our normal practice and we didn't want to change it halfway through so um, that's but yeah that's that material cost is pretty right on what those materials actually were and and it's broke down um, just so you know how I um,
calculated it was just by square linear foot. And I have a, a linear feet measurement for the Cooper edition and then for Ed, Mr. Uh, Porter helped me with all of this, linear, linear feet measurement for each of the lots. And then um, it took a lot of calculating, but um, broke it down basically price per foot. And that's how that the number came down. But I will say that your cost per foot is probably slightly less, slightly less than some of the others, um, but not, not substantially. And again, that's just because of the situation and what happened with um, us having to get a contractor halfway through. So, and and what what we had to do. That's the other reason we did that was so we could get the project done on time. Exactly. We had a time time constraints, which clearly we right through um, so we had to do some some work in there to get get it worked out but um, and the same way like on the street lights we had originally just thought about going in there with the wooden poles right and then the developer homeowners one of the metal poles right. and so then we decided okay then let's go with metal poles through the whole area thing. that right. way everything would look the same and that was free I also remember that the developer said that he would pay for the holes. Right. Because they didn't. Right. Well, right. if he doesn't, well, that's up to him. But that's what he said that I hear to me. Correct. It's what I remember right. hearing it on the, on the homeowner's property. Right. Yeah. Well, I think it was a good decision for the poles. They look they look mm -hmm. nice. And, yeah. And the lights look good. And the area looks good. Yeah. You know, I, I think those are good decisions. So. Yeah, it wasn't the... It, it, you know, I, I guess it's it is disappointing that you know just the people in the past didn't have to pay for the poles, and now we get to pay for the poles. And, yeah. and unfortunately, when we change and start going a different direction, somebody's going to be part of the. I, I guess I would I would uh, you know uh, suggest maybe somewhere in the middle then, you know, where property is already owned before the decision and the resolution was made. And I guess I can address that. If you may see individual poles going at, for example, Business Park, they're getting another pole out there. It's not going through this process because those folks are just paying up front with cash, but they are paying for it. Um, unfortunately, in the past, uh, somebody along the way made the decision to just put a bunch of metal poles in and not charge for that. Um, I don't know what happened there, but from now on, the customer is property owners are paying the difference of the cost and they're paying so they are paying for the cost of that metal pole so, so if you see poles going up and you think why are we not doing ordinance for those well that's because they're being just billed directly and they're just paying the whatever it is thousand dollar two thousand dollars so makes sense yep thank you any other questions another question we'll close our public hearing on the agenda this evening is the consent agenda for June 7th and appropriations 6B. Any questions? If no questions, I'll uh, entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda in its entirety. So moved by Councilman Graybone that we accept the consent agenda in its entirety. I have a second. Second by Councilman McMillan. Any further discussion? Jessica, would you take a roll call vote, please? Gingler? Yes. Ponto? Yes. McMillan? Yes. Latrell? Yes. Miller? Yes. Graybaugh? Yes. Thank you. Next item on the agenda this evening is the Ordinance 2186 Streetlight Assessment for North Campus and Silver Fox Edition. <coughs> Any comments? Question? I move that we approve ordinance 2186. Then, motion been made by Council Miller that we approve ordinance 2186. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Ponto. <coughs> Any further discussion? No further discussion. Jessica, would you please take a roll call vote? Ponto? 
Yes. Gangler? Yes. Graybomb? Yes. Latrell? Yes. McMillan? Yes. Miller? Yes. Thank you, Motion Perry. Next item on the agenda this evening is uh, under no resolutions under formal actions is uh, resubmitting the planning commissions <coughs> original zoning recommendations. Katie, do you want to make some Yeah, I can address this. Um, the uh, your recommendations went back to the Planning Commission at their end of their meeting last week. Uh, pursuant to statute, they have the choice of changing their recommendations, sending them their original recommendations back to you, or doing nothing. Uh, they chose to send back to you their original recommendations, which is, um, it's, not, it's not in here, but you, what you've seen before, which is the zoning regulations, the new zoning map, which includes the two mile extraterritorial zoning. So that's what they chose to bring back to you. Now, since we've gone through all the steps in the statute where we're at now, um, as a council, you can do, uh, <coughs> well, you can always do nothing. Um, you can adopt their recommendations by simple majority. You can change them by simple majority or, um, you know, do as you choose at this point. Last time, as you know, we needed the two thirds to make changes. Um, so if, for example, if you want, <coughs> last time there was a motion to adopt the zoning regulations for just the inside the city limits. If that's, if a similar motion is made tonight, you only need a simple majority to pass that. And what that would do is adopt zoning, the new zoning regulations, we already have zoning in the city, but what it, they're substantially updated. So um, it would adopt those new regulations. Those actually have to be adopted by ordinance. The reason you don't have an ordinance in front of you is because I didn't know what you're going to do. So I didn't want to try to guess and put several things in front of you. So however you vote is how I will create the ordinance. And then it will be attached to those zoning regulations and will be adopted. So, so hmm. if there's a group that just wants to <coughs> approve the zoning within the city limits, that could be it. Right. And my recommendation is for you to do something because we've We've paid a consultant. We've we need updated zoning regulations, <coughs> and we need an updated zoning map. So, uh, if there's disagreement about the outside, fine. But I I would like something to be done with the inside the city limits because planning commission and everyone has worked very hard on those. Uh, I mean, this is this is the what second time that they brought this back to us with the same recommendation. Yes. Yes. And they have to do that by statute. Yeah. Mayor, can I make one additional comment on yes. that in general? Um, 
our comprehensive plan, as you all know, um, is done and does include um, planning for outside the city limits. Um, so what we've done here is zoning just for inside, so there's no zoning outside. I get a lot of questions about what does what our planning commission look like if we don't have zoning. Well, it's going to look the same because our comprehensive plan plans for outside, we just don't have zoning. So we will still continue to have members from outside um, and inside, uh, just to clear, clear that up. So at any time, if the Planning Commission wants to address this again, they can go through the same process and make a recommendation to you to zone outside. And then, of course, it's always up to you guys to make that decision, the final decision. So. Are there still only three members on that? Yes, and we have two openings, one outside and one inside. We addressed, we addressed that at the meeting last <coughs> week that we need to put something in the paper again because I'm not sure a lot of people are aware that, <coughs> that we're short um, two members. So. Thank you, Katie. Next item on the agenda this evening is the TREC design agreement for the uh, water treatment preliminary design and pilot testing contract. Any comments from uh, council or staff? John has joined us this evening and uh, could probably address your questions if you have them. Oh, hi, John. <laughs> Sorry about my attire. My clothes changed the time I was thinking of. Our officer we gave a ticket on the way over here. <laughs> <laughs> was he from our district? No, he's in Kansas. No money for us. <laughs> well, I still made it on top. But Councilman Ponter just saying it. <laughs> <laughs> She didn't clean uh, your shirt pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> You're at least clean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the formal agreement uh, on the uh, items that we talked about, and you guys agreed to enter into a contract for preliminary engineering. Uh, just a couple of things. Staff has looked at the agreement and we've made some modifications, just clarifying that we're doing an alignment study within this within this effort. And uh, I'm actually having Schwabi working for some of the late work on that. So just wanted to let you know nothing's really changed from anything we talked about. There's a lot of things happening with water rights and who's going to be you know, participating, and we're going to find a lot of that out. Well, we'll present it to them tomorrow, and we'll find out after they go to the board. So. And then we're also working with uh, Division of Water Resources on what we do with water rights, and where it comes from. A lot of that hinges on who's involved. So. Yeah. Here's a quick question. It, you mentioned other possible expenses. What would be an example of another expense that we would have to be charged on top of the eighty-five thousand that's being offered? Um, there isn't really any except for like electricity charges for the pilot plant that would be uh, on the city. You know, there's no way to get it into a contract with anybody. So, um, and Katie had a good point in our in our our uh, special conditions, I guess. Our Legal language at the end of our contract that expenses will be on top of the eighty-five thousand. I changed that to be included, just like our last contract. That was a good catch. Wasn't trying to get mistaken. Well, I did obviously looking at the hourly billing rates. I just wanted to make sure you weren't going to be sticking anything up. Any other questions, for Joe? I would. Sure. Uh, and it's not about this contract, but. Treatment plant is something you know, but how, what size, of, what, what quantity of water is going to come out of that? What, so the quantity of water what? is going to come out of that? Um, it depends on who's, who we're selling water to. If it's just Beloit, we're looking at a 2 mg plan, expandable to 3. You initially. Not, not for this test one, though. That's oh, no, talking oh, no, we're talking one. 40 gallons a minute, 50 gallons a minute on the, on the pilot. Yeah. You're just going to go back small. into the river. Or in the drain, yeah. I mean, it's, that's the beauty of this technology. It doesn't create a lot of waste material. Thank you. Good question. Thank you. I move that we okay. accept that. Any other questions? <coughs> For John? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Uh, there's no further questions. I contain a motion to accept the correct design agreement for $85,000. You were starting, Lloyd. I thought you finished. <laughs> uh, I'd make a motion that we uh, approve the contract uh, with track design for the water treatment, preliminary design, and pilot testing for the program. It's been moved by Council Ms. Trail. We accept the proposal for 85000 from track design and the and uh, put in the uh, services. Second, second by council of great laws. Any further discussion? No further discussion, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Next item on the agenda this evening is promotion and sale of unsold properties at the North Campus. I think. Uh, there's a map in front of everybody that has all the properties that are sold. It's kind of a FYI. See what's happening up there. I would love to have one of those if somebody can let me have one before I go home tonight. Yeah, Lord. Just before the end of the day, I'd like to be able to see where they're at. Here. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I think you meant one of the lots. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's why I was like, oh, yeah, I'm trying to sell right now. He's like, let's get one. Let's get one done right now. <laughs> well, we got a jury prison. I think we can. <laughs> I don't want to pay for light poles, so. though. <laughs> you can get a wood lab. Oh, oh, Jay, do you want to? I'd like to make a couple of comments. Uh, I wrote a little memo to you about uh, about it, and uh, yeah. now that. The streets are done, the water, the sewer, the electricity is in, the, the uh, lighting is in, the street lighting is in. Uh, you're in a position to start uh, selling these properties. And my suggestion to you in the, in the memo is that you sell them for the original appraised value, plus any accumulated assessment, special assessments, plus the impact fee. That would be your upfront charge. and. Uh, and the impact would be at the time. No, the impact would be at the time when they could sell the property. Then they would have to take a permit to get their tapping fee for water and the tapping fee for sewer. I'm suggesting that you try to collect as much of your money up front as possible, not later, and start recovering the cost. Uh, they, <laughs> And I've given you an example of what the cost would be. The impact fees in total would be like $1,250 uh, for water, electric, and, and uh, sewer. The assessment, I took the assessment on the most expensive residential lot, that would be like $928 a year. Uh, of course, each year, since it's a 10-year assessment, that would increase by, so if you have, didn't sell a lot for two years, it would increase by another 900 in the price and uh, then the impact fee. So the highest selling lot in the residential portion of that, and there are 44 of those lots, would be $8,928. The average cost per lot is $5,300, and the average assessment is $7,887, and then the impact fee $1,250, which means a lot would sell for $7,274 as an average, uh, and from my observation, that's a pretty good, a pretty good deal, particularly when the lots across the street, I've been told are selling for $50,000. Katie? I just have a couple comments. Um, I think maybe we have a, a misunderstanding, um, and this is all for you guys to decide anyway. So my thought was we sell for the appraised value for appraised amount and so that's your contract price obviously if, if five years down the road we add on whatever the assessments have been for those five years because the city has paid those but the issue with the impact fee is for example if a buyer is coming in and buys two lots for one structure one there should only be one impact fee but the, the problem with doing that at the time of contract is they may tell us they're putting one structure and may pay us for only one, but then they may change things on us, put in two structures, and just come back and say, 
I'm not paying you that other impact fee. I already paid that. So my suggestion for impact fees is at the time of building permit, we figure out how much each impact fee is, and they get their building permit fee and each impact fee, and they pay that at that time, rather than the time of contract. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree with that too. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. But yeah, because the impact fees also may go up. Exactly. Don't know what the cost of the utilities are. Right. Yeah. That's right. Kind of I think it's a lot cleaner if yeah. you have your appraised amount, and it's a lot better for the customer, I think, because they know what their contract price is going to be. The impact fee, they have a pretty good idea, but that may fluctuate over time. So, so tonight we just would like to have a motion to sell the lots that they're appraised. We also discussed, um, and it, 